In this video, we're going to take a look at section 6.6, .6, and we're going to basically tie together everything we've been talking about up to this point, which is inverses uh, of you know exponential and logarithmic functions, right? That relationship. So we've been kind of talking about this in the last video. Uh, we had a little bit of kind of foreshadowing. I pointed out to you uh, one example where we might use uh, this idea, and here we'll officially tie this all together. So let's first look at a couple examples of logarithmic equations. <clears throat> so a couple things to remind ourselves of from uh, the prior section or two. Uh, the first one being uh, the definition of the logarithm. And what we're really going to do occasionally is we'll use uh, the idea that we can rewrite the logarithm in this equivalent exponential form. And we did that quite a bit in 6.4. Uh, and we'll see that there's some times where this is uh, convenient to use that tool to write between the two. Um, also, don't forget that uh, we can uh, use the property that, you know, if like m equals n, then log base a of m equals log base a of n. And this says that I can log both sides of an equation. And then we could go the other direction, right? If I have two logs set equal to each other, as long as the bases are the same, then I can basically drop the logs and set the two insides of the logs equal to each other. We might see that as being convenient occasionally. And then we have those three properties in the last section uh, where we call the, the quotient rule, the product rule, and the power rule. And usually when we use these, we're going kind of backwards. We're starting with this side, we're combining into one logarithm. We're starting with the right-hand side, combining into one logarithm. All right, let's take a look at this first example. So when I look at this first example, one thing I notice is that I, I almost have two logarithms set equal to each other. I have log base 3 of 4, I have log base 3 of x. And this is almost two logarithms set equal. Um, first thing I notice, though, before I can can see that is two logs equals, I have this coefficient of two. So I think what comes to mind here is I'm going to bring this two inside as an exponent. We're going to use that power rule that we we saw you know on the prior slide and we saw in the prior section. So I'm going to bring that two inside and write this as log base three of four equals log base three of x squared. And then again, I'll use that property in particular that if I have two logarithms equal to each other, I can in essence drop the two logs. And again, it's because the bases are the same. So because this is log base 3 of 4, log base 3 of x squared, then I can in essence drop the logs and set the two quantities inside equal to each other. Now, this has the convenience that I have gotten rid of the logarithm. So now I can solve this equation. This is a quadratic equation. I can solve this in a couple different ways. I would square root both sides. So if I square root both sides of this equation, I'm going to get plus or minus 2. All right, and then you know when we check our answer here, we just want to remember that um, I can't have the log of 0, and I can't have the log of a negative number. So when I plug positive 2 in, uh, I'm going to get something which is valid, right? But when I plug negative 2 in, you know, I'm going to get the log of negative 2 here, um, and that's not legitimate. So we'll take the positive value as our solution. All right, now when we talk about checking our answer here, um, just point a couple things out to you. And I mean, technically, when you check a solution, you should always come back to the original equation, right? Um, now, that might be a little challenging, because if I look at log base 3 of 2, that's not an obvious number to calculate. Right? So I probably would take out my calculator um, and evaluate that number. Now, in order to do that, I would use the change of base formula. So on the left-hand side here, I would have to use the change of base formula to plug this in my calculator. So remember, that's going to look like ln of 4 over ln of the original base, which is ln of 3. So that would be the left-hand side of the equation. And then the right-hand side of the equation, I would have 2 times. And then again, I'm going to change the base. I'm going to have ln of the x value, <coughs> excuse me, ln of the x value was 2 over the ln of 3. So I can take out my calculator and evaluate those expressions. All right, so I took out my calculator, and, and on the left-hand side of my equation, right, I had ln of 4 divided by ln of 3, and that gives me this decimal value. And then on the right-hand side, I had 2 times ln of 2 over ln of 3, and you can see I get the exact same decimal value. So I'm, I'm showing that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Now, again, obviously, if you don't have a TI calculator, you have some other calculator you've been using, either your your cell phone or you've downloaded an app. <clears throat> and there's a couple web-based calculators as well. 
I could also check graphically. So let's look how we might do that real quick. So here's going to be my objective when graphing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the left-hand side, log base 3 of 4. I'm going to graph y equals log base 3 of 4. And I'm going to graph the right-hand side. I'm going to graph y equals 2 times log base 3 of x. I'm going to, in essence, find where these two graphs equal each other. So I'm finding their intersection point. So let me bring up Desmos real quick. So I'm going to graph y equals, and I'm going to go to the functions button, miscellaneous. I'm going to choose the log base button. Right? So I'm going to type the base in, which was a 3. And then I can hit my right button, and I have log base 3 of 4. So there's my first graph. And then I'm going to graph uh, y equals, and then it was 2 times log base 3 of x. So I'm going to have a 2, and then let me go to functions, choose log base 3 of x. So I'm finding the intersection point of these two graphs. That's the solution. So I can just see right here, if I click, there's my solution point of 2. And then we can see the y values are what we got out of our calculator. And if I bring up my calculator real quick, right, you can see there's the y value, 1.262, if we were to round. Right? So kind of a cool way to check <clears throat> just by graphing left-hand side, graphing right-hand side, and finding that intersection point. All right, let's take a look at another example. So in this example, um, here's kind of what comes to mind. <clears throat> On the left-hand side of the equation, I have two logarithms being added. So I think I could use that property, uh, the product rule, right, where I combine the logarithms as a product. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to use that product rule. And again, I'm going backwards with the product rule. So I'm going to write this as log base 2 of this thing times this thing. Right? So I'm going to take the insides of the logs and multiply them. That's where my product comes from. All right, now that I have isolated one single logarithm, I think the next best thing to try here is to rewrite this logarithm in an exponential form. So I'm going to take the base of the log, raise it to the power, and it equals what's inside, right? So I'm going to have 2 raised to the power of 1 equals what's inside. And then now I have a quadratic equation. So I'm going to bring everything over to the left-hand side, to 0 on the right, and then solve this quadratic. So I'll factor out a common x. So x equals 0 or x equals negative 1 are the two possible solutions. right? So again, I really need to check here. Okay? And again, a couple different ways to check. Right? Uh, we could check um, by plugging the numbers in, changing the base. Uh, we could check by graphing. Uh, I just went ahead and plugged the numbers in. Right? So if I plug x equals um, uh, 0 in, right? I'm going to get log of 2 and log of 1. So there's the equation when I plug x equals 0 in. So when I combine these together, I get the log of 2 times 1. And then when I rewrite this in an exponential form, 2 to the 1 equals 2, I see that that works. And then I could do the same thing. I'll plug negative 1 in. So if I plug negative 1 in here, I'm going to get negative 1 plus 2, which is log of 1. I'm going to get 1 minus negative 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And you can see I really have the same equation that I had to begin with, right? So that's going to work as well. So in this case, both of those values are solutions of x. All right, now let's look at a couple examples where we will solve exponential equations. Now, this is where we're probably going to spend the bulk of our work uh, when we do the word problem. So when we look at the applications, uh, most of the applications we're going to focus on in this class will be exponential in form. So uh, let's take a little time. Let's get a couple extra examples in this objective. So first of all, let's remind ourselves that um, if we have uh, equations where we can match the base, that that's by far the quickest approach to solving. And let's also remind ourselves that if we uh, like have a log base a of a to the r, right, that these are inverses. This logarithm and this exponential are inverses, and they cancel each other out. So these will typically be the two ways that we solve exponentials. And, and then we may use those properties of logarithms here and there, um, our pro quotient rule, our product rule, and our power rule. So let's take a look at our first example. <clears throat> so. One general rule of thumb here when solving any of these equations, whether it's logarithms or exponentials, is if you can, you know, isolate one logarithm on the equation. 
right? So when you think back to our two prior examples with the logarithms, you know, one of the examples we combined logarithms to get one single logarithm, all right? I'm going to typically do that here with exponential equations too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equation and isolate the exponential. Now there's a couple different paths I can take here and, and I think the easiest path is if you recognize you can match bases, that should be the way to go. So because I recognize 8 can be written as 2 cubed, that's the path that I'm going to take. So I'm going to match the bases on both sides and then just remind myself that once the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So once I set the exponents equal to each other, then I can solve for x. All right, and then again, you know, checking uh, our solutions, right? So when you check your solution here, obviously I can take x equals 2 and plug it back in. And in this case, this is such a pretty number, right? To 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 is 2 cubed. So this is 8 minus 7, so I get 1 equals 1, right? But I, I could take the same approach that I did with that logarithmic equation. I could take out a calculator, plug it in, and get, you know, decimal values over here. And in most cases, that's what I'll end up with. Um, or um, I could take out my graphing calculator and check as well. Um, maybe on this example, this is a little too simple to bother with all that work. So the next example, we'll use those to uh, check our work. All right, so in this equation, notice that we can't match bases, even if we wanted to, right? So in this case, I'm going to take the approach of uh, using the inverse um, kind of idea here, right? In other words, um, I'm going to log both sides of the equation. Now, I'll point out to you, I have a couple different options here on, on which logarithm I use. And I could use log base 3 and I could log base 3 both sides. And we're going to do that in a couple minutes because right? log base 3 and base 3 exponential are inverses. They will undo each other. The first one I want to show you is what I prefer personally. I think it's a little bit more convenient. And I'm just going to use log base e because that's on my calculator. And it will help me a little bit when I go to get a decimal value. So I'm going to first use log base e of both sides. And when I do that, I want to point out to you that this is base e log. This is base 3 exponential. So these are not inverses. They don't undo each other. So in that case, what I have to do is use that power rule. And I have to bring this x in front as a coefficient. So I will do that. Now once I do that, then I want to point out to you this is really a linear equation. This is x times ln of 3. So to get the x by itself, I'm going to divide the ln 3 to the other side. And then here is my solution. All right, and then at this point, to check my answer, I'm going to take out my calculator, and I'm going to plug that value in. So let's plug that value in. So let me turn my calculator on. And I have ln of 7 divided by ln of 3. And I get a decimal value of about 1.77. So I should be able to say, well, then plugging this number in, 3 raised to the power of 1.77 should be about 7. right? I'm not going to get exactly 7. I guess 6.99. And it's because I rounded. right? But quick way to check there. Right, and then again, I, I could graph, right? So I'm going to graph the left-hand side, y equals 3 to the x. I'm going to graph the right-hand side, y equals 7. So if I graph the left-hand side, y equals 3 to the x. So let me do the, uh, let me punch 3. Let me hit the A to the B button and then type x. And then I have y equals 7. And I'm going to look for the intersection point there, right? And the intersection point, where is it at? Why isn't it clicking? There we go. Is 1.77. And there's our answer. Okay. Now, I want to point out to you real quick here that uh, my math lab is going to want exact values. So my math lab is going to want this as your answer. ln of 7 divided by ln of 3. That is your answer. Keep in mind, I cannot cancel the ln's here. Right? Please don't cancel the ln's. A lot of students make that mistake. I cannot cancel the ln's and say that this is 7 over 3. That's not my answer. Right? That would be kind of similar to doing this. If I had square root of 7 over square root of 3 and say, oh, I'm just going to cancel the square roots, and that's 7 over 3. And that is definitely not true. Let me put in not equals there, right? So this is my answer here. Ln of 7 over ln of 3 is my answer. And then this is the decimal approximations, 1.77 to however much accuracy that I want. 
All right, so again, my math lab is going to always want the exact value unless it specifies to give a decimal. Now, I'm going to solve this equation um, a different way. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use the idea of the inverse function. So let me slide that solution to the side. And let's look at this in a slightly different manner. So instead of using the ln of both sides, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, I'm going to do log base 3 of both sides so that it will undo the base 3 exponential. All right. So I'm going to log base 3 of the left-hand side. I'm going to log base 3 of the right-hand side. Now, the, the elegance of this solution is that log base 3 and base 3 exponential are inverses, and so those wipe each other out, and I get just x as the value. Right? So that's what I'm trying to remind us here. When the base of the log and the base of the exponential match, these wipe each other out and just the exponent drops out of that. So I get x equals log base 3 of 7. So this is the solution to the equation as well. All right? This is just the log base 3 version. And if I wanted to make the connection between these two, I would just use the change of base formula. So remember the change of base formula says I can change to any base I want. I could do ln of the inside over ln of the base, and that's what gives me that value here. So again, using the change of base formula, we could make that same connection. All right, a couple more examples I want to take a look at, and this one is, is uh, quite a bit more difficult. Uh, and just to point out to you again, typically our process is to isolate the exponential term. So before I really even do uh, any logarithms here, uh, I'm going to isolate the exponential. So I'm going to subtract the 8 over to the other side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and that's going to give me just 2 to the x, right? 2 to the x minus 3 in this case. So I've isolated the exponential term. Right. Again, I'm going to notice that I can't really match bases, right? I can't take a think think of three as two to a power. So I'm going to have to log both sides of the equation. Now I have options again. I could use log base two on both sides, or I could just use ln on both sides. Right now, personally, I prefer to just use ln because then I don't have to change the base at the end. Right? But either way, it doesn't really matter. Right? Either way is going to get me to the same place. So I'm going to log both sides of the equation, and this time I'm going to use log base e. So again, remember when I do that, what I have to do is use the power rule to bring this power in front as a coefficient. Excuse me, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 2 to get that off of the x term. And then I'm going to add the 3 to the other side. And here's my exact solution. And again, it would probably be best for me to check my work, right? I could get a decimal for this number and plug it back into my original equation. Just make sure that I get 23 equals 23 here. All right, so I took out my calculator. I typed in ln 3 over ln 2 plus 3, and I get a decimal for that. So I get like 4.58, 4.58 if I round. So then I can say 5 times 2 raised to the power of, let me put in parentheses, uh, 4.58. And then I have minus 3 in that parentheses. Let me close the exponent. And then I add 8. So when I hit Enter, I should get something close to 23 equals 23. And, and I do. Right? Again, rounding, my solution gives me approximate values there. All right, now in this next example, notice it says solve the equation using a graphing utility, right? And express the solution rounded to two decimal places. So I just want to point out to you that if we tried to solve this by hand, right, what we have been doing is isolating the exponential. So if I try to solve this by hand, I subtract the x to the other side and I isolate the exponential. And then I would log both sides. So if I do ln of both sides, that would be my next step. And then these two things undo each other, right? And I get ln of, which is log base e, and I get base e exponential. So I get just the exponent drop out of that. Now the problem is, now I have taken an exponential equation and I've converted it to a logarithmic equation. So I'm going to end up going in circles. If I try to isolate the logarithm here, uh, I'm not going to be able to do it. Right? So, right, so I rewrite this logarithm. I say base e raised to the power of x equals what's inside, and I'm back right where I started. So 
can't isolate the variable. So this is really is using a graphing utility. And again, this is similar uh, to what I've shown you already. So I could graph the left-hand side, I can graph the right-hand side and find their intersection points. Now if I do that on my graphing calculator, here's the right-hand side, y equals 2. Here's the left-hand side, y equals x plus e to the x. And I can see the intersection here is about 0.443 if I round. Okay, so I won't take the time to show you how to find intersection in this video, but I will point out to you that if you come into Blackboard, you go to our graphing devices link, right? Over here in the tutorials, I show you how to find the intersection of two graphs using the TI. All right, so one last example here is uh, application. So in this application, we are told that the population of a certain country in 1995 was 288 million people. In addition, the population of the country was growing at a rate of 1% per year. So assuming that this growth rate continues, the model P of T equals 288 times 1.010 raised to the power of T minus 1995 represents the population P in millions of people in year T. So letter A says, uh, you know, when would the population be 370 million people? So basically, we're going to take this equation, right? Or the question of when, it means we're solving for the variable in the exponent of an exponential. And we're going to set the population, right, the y value of the equation equal to 330. So I'm going to set the y value equal to 330. I'm going to isolate this exponential. So first thing is I'm going to divide the 288 to the other side. And then again, I have some options here. So I'm going to log both sides of the equation. And I'm going to use log base e. I'm going to use ln. Right? And again, the advantage to this is I don't have to change the base at the end. So now I'm going to use the power rule. I'm going to bring this exponent and pull it in front as a coefficient. And then I'm almost done. Right? So now I'm going to divide this number off to the other side. And then I'm going to add the 1995 over. So if I take out a calculator and crunch that number, I'm going to find out that the year 2008 is when the population would be 330 million people. And the letter B is, is identical in far as process, except now they're giving me a different number. So letter B is I'm going to set the population equal to 376. So same process. I need to isolate the exponential. So I'm going to divide the 288 over, and then I'm going to, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm going to log both sides. I'm going to use ln of both sides. And then I'm going to use the power rule, pull this in front as a coefficient. I'm going to divide this log over and then add the 1995 over. And if I plug this into my calculator, I find out that that would be the year 2021. All right, so that is everything that's in section 6.6. .6. We talk about solving logarithmic and exponential equations. And in the last two sections that we'll look at, 6, 7, and 6, 8, we're going to look um, at applications. We're going to look at word problems. Excuse me, mainly, right, mostly focus our attention on exponential equations, although we will see a couple logarithmic um, applications. Again, if you have questions, please post on the discussion board in Blackboard, and I will see you.